I think it's starting. Yeah. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Pivoteers and Pioneers Technology Enabled Recovery in the Age of Social Distancing, brought to you by Open Hub and the Office for Economic Development in Orange County. This series is part of their Small Business Survival Kit. Open Hub is presenting the series in advance of the annual Hudson Valley Tech Fest, which will be held online this October. Today's interactive discussion is live streaming on Facebook and featuring local businesses sharing stories about how they overcame challenges using technology during the pandemic shutdown. We believe sharing these stories can help make a difference for the reopening of our local economy. So now for some introductions, let's start with Bill Fioravanti of Orange County. Oh, please hold on, please. Do you have to unmute yourself. If you think I'd know this, eight weeks in now, you think I'd be used to it. Shelly, thanks so much for the introduction. Again, my name is Bill Fioravanti. I'm the Director of Economic Development for Orange County. I'm here and uh, representing the county, County Executive Steve Newhouse, all of my colleagues, uh, that have been working hard in response to this COVID pandemic that we've been dealing with. Uh, we've been putting a number of resources out there and really trying to be um, a source that everyone can go to, especially businesses in this area. At the end of this webcast, after the program's done, I I'm going to touch on some of those resources so that everyone on the call that's seeing it live or seeing it recorded uh, can access any of those. Uh, but nothing is more essential than using technology right now because it's we all have to adapt or pivot, as we're saying in this series. Uh, and, and the focus here is really going to be how to employ technology. This is, of course, our um, really just the latest in our series of Hudson Valley Tech Fest, as uh, mm -hmm. Shelley talked about. Uh, the reason that uh, our office in Orange County partnered with Open Hub. Uh, was really because we had mutual goals of trying to grow the tech sector here in Orange County in, in the Hudson Valley region, the Mid-Hudson especially. So uh, this is just a, another step in that same direction. We're very proud to be a part of it. We're excited about the resources you're gonna be able to gain here. So please stay tuned at the end. Again, I'll talk about a, a few other uh, helps that we may be able to offer to, to folks that are dealing with uh, this crisis, but uh, I look forward to the information we're, we're going to gain here, and I appreciate Open Hub, Shelly, everyone uh, that's been a part of doing this. So, Shelly, I'm going I'm to kick it back to you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bill. And yeah, those resources are going to be great, and we will get to them at the end uh, after we hear from Jamie Farella, the owner of Brothers Barbecue. Uh, and now for uh, an introduction from Yulia Ovchenikova, the founder of Open Hub. Thank you, Shelley. Hello, everyone. My name is Yulia Vchinikova, and I am the founder of Open Hub. Every day, we work with stakeholders to bring government, businesses, and talent together to build a stronger technology driven economy here. It's great. Thank you, Yulia. Thank you so much. Um, and we also have a guest tech expert. and. Uh, Luia, I was wondering if you can in, uh, introduce yourself now. Thanks. Thank you very much, Shelley. My name is Louis Coleman. I'm the IT director over at the Nikki Jones Agency. We are based in Port Jervis, New York. Um, I intend to offer my knowledge and experience to uh, assist businesses in the area, uh, you know, in relevance to technology. So thank you again. Thank you, Louis. I said Louis, so sorry for that. Um, my name is Shelley Tween. I'm Communications Coordinator for Open Hub, and I'll be helping to moderate today. Um, so a little bit of info on why small business is so important to Open Hub, Orange County, and the Hudson Valley region. Businesses in the U.S. are overwhelmingly small, and the Hudson Valley is no exception. According to an annual survey in 2016, 89% of businesses had fewer than 20 employees. 89%. And if you add the number of non-employer businesses, solopreneurs, the percentage increases to 98%. Small businesses are one of the primary driving forces in our economy and very essential to the Hudson Valley. So now we get to the part where I would have introduced Jamie Farella, co-owner of Brothers Barbecue in Windsor, New York, who is the guest featured business. However, his brother Gavin, with whom he co-owns the business, informed us today that 
Jamie was rushed to the hospital Wednesday and is in the ICU in New York Presbyterian Hospital. So our hearts and best wishes go out to Jamie and his family. Um, Jamie uh, really shared brilliantly last week in an interview prep. Um, today, we're gonna play clips, video clips of that. It, Jamie's an excellent communicator. So I think can, we can get a lot out of what he shared that day. And um, please be kind when watching. This was, this was just an interview prep, um, but I think we'll get a lot out of it. Uh, Yulia, can you start playing the clips? They're just gonna play right through and then we'll, we'll get to, um, and then we'll get to Bill sharing uh, resources. And then after that, questions and answers. Thank you. Yulia, we, we can't hear you, so we can't hear the video. Yeah, thank you. You know, they call in, we take their order, we put it through our POS system. And uh, we had just a couple months back, our POS company started online ordering. So we kind of just mm. delved into that a little bit and started using that. Not to its not not the way we're using it now, but you know, it's good. We got a little insight to it. So when this whole thing happened, one of our busiest days of this madness, and the phone's just ringing off the hook. And we kind of sat down and sat down with my brothers and we said, you know, how can we streamline this process? How can we make it so that everybody can have the same treatment, you know, everybody can get their orders in and we can expedite the fastest way possible. So after doing some research, uh, I found this company called Numa Health, which is kind of like a, it's an artificial artificial intelligence call forwarding. I don't know if you ever guys ever heard of it. It's pretty new, but um, Numa so helps, right? Yeah, yeah, Numa helps. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to take your main hub phone number and forward that um, to text or um, or forward any way you want to. So, cool. so what we've been doing is they actually have this program called Eat Emoji where people could call your phone and they say, hey, if you want to order fast, press one and we'll yep. send you a text message. Yep. Um, we didn't, we decided not to go with that because the way that would work is you can get another iPad and the orders would come in and then our staff would have to enter it. So the way we set it up was that it would all be linked through our uh, online ordering which comes to our POS system already. So when those orders come in, they're printing directly to the printers. So there's not an extra step in between that, you know, which okay. takes a lot of time. Okay. Um, it okay. also allowed us to, to answer through text, you know, like now we can, you know, we can run the conversation and we can choose who to speak to when and how to expedite the order. Because honestly, everyone thinks to the most important and we, you know, I'm saying that in a nice way. We want, everybody is important, but sometimes a customer will take up too much time and you're trying to, they're only sending the food out, you know? Yes. So by using text, that allows us to dictate the conversation, you know? Let us get your order out. We're coming out to you. What can we help you with? Yes. You know, a day like yesterday where we had to make some refunds, customers are texting us today. We're making no substitute the app and saying, hey, we're going to call you tomorrow. We're going to refund everything. We're sending you the be much more organized and proficient than what we're doing. This is fantastic. Are you going to say everything again? Are you okay with saying everything again? Okay, stop. Stop. Um, <laughs> so we're almost ready for the next clip. Here, uh, sorry for last minute. We just find what I because this is exactly sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so we try to select clips. It's a little hard to hear. And um, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that. Um, we will post clips after this interview. Okay, okay. 
because he mentions a lot of technology that they used. Um, do you want to try playing in the next clip, Yulia? Is yeah, it you know, it wasn't too bad for me, I'll say, Shelly, and I just okay. see someone else, you know, you know, just put something in the chat saying that they could hear them as well, so. Okay, good. Going right. with it. Thank you, thank you, Yulia. Are you ready to connect one? Shelly, are you ready for the next one? Absolutely. Just play them one after the other. Okay. Share screen. are real busy day so last night i was talking to my brothers and all the staff and they're like they're scared for father's day because they're like right right and already we said you know try to learn from the situation right sorry yulia yulia you need to share oh there you go <laughs> yeah, a little bit and yeah. definitely more to come because we have Oh, yeah. coming, right? I mean, my brothers and all staff members, they're scared for Father's Day because they're like, right, right. And already we said, you know, trying to learn from the situation. Correct. Exactly. And how can we make it better and more fluid? And I think what we're going to do is, we've already talked about is cutting down the menu, like doing family style meals only or doing like full racks, keeping it concise. So if people really want it, they can get it, but cut out a lot of the small little items because that's what kind of slows you up a bit you know and at the same time following the chain orders for sure it would help because people will understand that the order quite close and they're sorry okay and you want me to play next one next right one. yes it's like there's this program called it's a checkmate and what it does is it's um it basically integrates all the ordering platforms. So if you had DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, it makes it so it all comes to one screen and, and actually prints to your POS system. And I reached, when this is all going on, I reached out to them and they told me it's six to eight weeks just to get it implemented. So at that point I was kind of like, all right, well, I, I kind of signed up for it, but then I forgot about it because I was like, in six to eight weeks, who knows where we're gonna be at, you know? So, and it's funny, like, I'm the type of guy, me and my brothers, we were, we were against, like, DoorDash. Actually, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with DoorDash. They've done a great job. Not only have they, you know, they gave us a free month to try, you know, to start with. Not only did they do that for restaurants, but they also, for the month of uh, April and May, they cut 50% of their commission, you know, for restaurants. And they also took an extra step where the money would come once a week. They made it available where you can re receive your money daily, you know, mm -hmm. which to me is great, you know. Um, as that's far exactly what I want to hear because yeah. that's your research. You invested so much in your research and also your practice, all of this, you got the real hands on on that. Yeah, well, a lot for sure. And it's funny because this whole thing, what I've learned is, now, you know, sometimes you condition people, we're conditioning our guests. I think when everything gets back to normal, we might continue this way of doing takeout, you know? Yeah. Instead right. of answering the phones, we're gonna have people order online because it's, it's streamlining it so fast that people can order, they can pay online, they come in, just grab their food and go, you know? That's right. Where before we'd have lines because we're answering the phones, trying to place orders, you know? now using the app, what we'll do is if somebody can't place the order online, they'll see the text and we'll call them and then we'll take the order. But at first, we're giving them the chance to do it yourself. Place it yourself. If you're having a problem, then we'll contact you and help you out, you know? So it's it's been so much so that we're like, hey, when this goes on, our Friday and Saturday nights when we're mobbed, we're gonna do this. Instead of having to have three people answer the phone, we're just gonna have people order online, you know? They're yes. doing it now, so why can't they do it in the future? You know what? I'm smiling again. 
while listening to him. He's such a positive person, just amazing. Should we do next one? Shelly, what do you think? Absolutely. I, I wish he was able to be alive and everyone could feel his energy even more. Yeah, he's an amazing business owner. Repeat customer base. I mean, our average customers are coming once a week, if not, and there's customers that come two to three times a week, if not more. Great. So a, a big part of my business is repeat customers. Jeez. Yeah. And, you know, we're a family business. We treat our staff like family, and we treat our customers like family. They're extended family to us, you know? That's right. Uh, you know, our biggest thing is we're not going to serve anything that we do with meat, you know? So, we will tell you the truth. Okay, 43. And we lost, you know, we lost a lot of staff. There's a lot of staff who didn't want to come, don't want to work because they're scared. And I, listen, I can't blame them. A lot of them are heart. Actually, myself, I'm a, I'm a, I have a heart condition, so I'm a heart patient myself. So everything I'm doing from, I'm doing from the home. I can't go to the office because I'm high risk. So it's, it's been hard for me trying to navigate this at home, you know, with my brothers and just trying to communicate and run the business like this, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a real struggle, you know, uh, I think, especially when it comes to business, small businesses don't get the same recognition that large corporations do. Absolutely. I mean, That's the if, if you go on Amazon right now and you try and order, normally where you have Prime in two days, you're going to out, you know. But for some reason, when it comes to the small business, people are demanding. They want you to jump. They want you to, you know. And it's a small business that gets affected the most by, exactly. by you know, people want refunds. So we said we lost down on a lot of food. Thank God a lot of people were understanding. But, I mean, they even threatened to run over one of our employees, you know. So it's like, it's... Somebody got that upset because their order wasn't out on time? Yeah, I, I mean, granted, they only two hours, but it's, it's, the problem is me, 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 you know? And at a time like this, we're supposed to be thinking about everybody in, the, in our neighbor. And people say it, but they don't live it, you know? And, and the problem is, uh, you know, people, it's just like a chain reaction. Somebody put the order in. Say the order is supposed to be at five thirty. They show up at five o'clock. Well, now we're trying to help them out and get the order out as fast as possible. But when that person who shows up at five o'clock, who really ordered from five o'clock, now they're waiting, and it's just a chain reaction. It just slowly builds and builds and builds. And there's just no. I mean, I, honestly, I feel sorry for my staff, and I really appreciate what they're doing because they are really on the front lines out there. We're taking all the precautions we can. And uh, like social distancing, even inside the restaurant, we're social distancing. We're spread out. Everyone's wearing masks. We're constantly wiping everything down. And on top of that, you know, we haven't allowed customers to come into the restaurant. Everything is just curbside delivery. You know? So, I think he mentioned he's in high risk, and that's what happened. Kind of reminds you of the situation we're in and just how close we are all to it, really. Yeah, he said he had a heart condition, um, but this was the last thing we expected to hear. I will share a couple more episodes if you okay. Yeah. Uh, Shelly, you may want to in the chat put a description just so if people join late, they know what's going on. Okay, thank you. what's out there. So I think that's great as far as like, you know, as far as the app I'm using, somebody told me about that. I would have, he said, hey, you want to check this out? I would have never known if he didn't say anything. So I think that's very important, especially with small businesses because a lot of them don't have the time or, or the money to go search for something. So if you, you did just, a great job. You did a very special <laughs> digging into 
if you know your business process. Business yes. process first, technology second, but definitely yes. we're empowered by technology. Yeah, absolutely. Technology, I understand that. technology can make things so much more easier. Right, and that's... And one more... Okay. <clears throat> so... But also pivoting, I mean, this, the restaurant business is all about pivoting. You know, you're all about um, changing with the times, you know? So, and I think, you know, one of the questions I saw, we asked about how we opened, you know, we opened from 11 to 8, and then a couple of days later, we changed from 3 to 8. Yes, that's one of the pivots, right? Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's both. It's pivoting and technology. It's technology because we can look at our POS system and we can say, hey, all our sales are from three to eight o'clock. You know, eleven to three, we're not doing much sales, so it's not worth being open. You know, our biggest hour. I think our biggest problem now is five thirty. Everybody wants to eat at five thirty. You know, so we're you know five thirty that hour, five thirty to six thirty is where we get all the orders. And so now you know the challenge. Now you can put the ask out. Okay, and maybe one more. That's it. I was I was talking to somebody else and we're in this we're in the process of building a second location in New Jersey. Correct. And actually we were supposed to open this month, so it's it's they just reopened the construction site this week, so it's getting pushed back to July. But um, the loans are such a low percentage rate that we like, so my accountant said, you might as well apply for it and just you know, take advantage of it. So, so let's not. Up. And the last one. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, that was, he, he hasn't really applied for loans, but he's thinking of doing it for the second location. Doing this and and the open hub is great. Like I really think a lot of small businesses can benefit from this. Because like I said, they don't have the time to research technology. So if there's something, if there's an area where they could go get some information, it could definitely help their businesses. So. That's great. I will stop share here. Thank you. Uh, all right. So. Jane, that's Jamie Farella of Brothers Barbecue, and he's going to get better very soon. I mean, he's better than he was two days ago. Um, and uh, so if you were able to hear, there was uh, four or five pivots that he did in the operations of his business, changing the times and uh, and uh, communications with customers was now through text and through Facebook and new delivery systems to, ex to exchange product. He started using delivery systems like Grubhub and another delivery system, I don't remember the name right now. They um, really enhanced the use of their Facebook uh, platform for promotion. And then there was other tech sol solutions like his POS point of sale software that he was using and creating new workflows um, so that the business could be more efficient uh, during uh, while the workload was actually increased by trying to clean the restaurant as new people came in. Um, so if everyone might think about a question or two to um, on behalf of yourself or your business or just some wisdom you wanna share, think of those things. Um, if you know what you wanna share, put it in the chat, just say, you know, a question or share expertise in the chat column. Right now we're gonna hear, hear from Bill Fioravanti uh, with resources that Orange County has available for small businesses. Thank you, Shelly, and uh, thanks for still carrying carrying on here and showing Jamie's videos. That was still you could still feel him, and of course, you telling us what happened with him beforehand. Obviously, uh, it kind of brings it home, really, and uh, you know, kind of 
uh, he had a different feel when you're listening to him, knowing knowing that he's uh, you know he's he's facing it right now, facing the risk himself. So uh, our our certainly our thoughts and prayers are, are with Jamie. But uh, thanks for still sharing that. Um, I mentioned this at the top of the webcast that we at Orange County, uh, led by Steve Newhouse, our county executive, has we've really tried to be responsive to all individuals and employees and employers out there that are struggling through. Uh, the stay-at-home order under the pandemic currently. I just want to take a moment and show you what some of those resources are, really, uh, let you know that uh, we're here for you. We certainly don't want anyone to feel that they're alone. We've talked to hundreds and hundreds of businesses over the last several several uh, weeks. We've sp spoken to uh, well over a thousand employees looking for unemployment and things like that. So I'm going to share my screen, if that's okay, and just show you uh, very quickly here, this is the Orange County webpage. You see the address up there, orangecountygov.com, easy enough. I do often remind people just to use your search engine, Google or whatever it might be, uh, Orange County in New York, this will come right up. Uh, you can go right, I'm gonna click right on this COVID-19 update page. Obviously most organizations in general have uh, that uh, at the uh, at the home page, home screen right now really. Uh, th this page of course has all the resources that are necessary uh, uh, related to the, the current state at home order, some talk about reopening, which I'll get to in a minute, contact tracing, all these resources you're seeing here, testing, economic assistance, uh, what's open and closed, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna click on the economic assistance tab because that's really what I've been focusing on. Uh, I mentioned at the top, I'm the director of economic development for the county. My job normally is business attraction and expansion, trying to help uh, grow the, the economy here, bring in new, employers, uh, help others that are already here continue to grow and thrive. Uh, also, as I mentioned, trying to really attract and, and grow uh, other sectors that maybe are not uh, plentiful here or not uh, um, really where we want them to be, including tech, as I mentioned. That's why I partner with, with Open Hub, why the county is aligned with them on the same initiative. Uh, so uh, we are, uh, again, I'm normally working on that, but now I've been manning a business hotline that uh, I'd like to share with you. It's 845-360-0231, 360 uh, uh, That is actually normally my office line, but we turned it into a business hotline and myself and my colleagues at the county have been fielding all those call calls. Uh, again, we're on the COVID page here for the county. Uh, this is the economic assistance. So we keep a lot of information on here, the PPP loans, the banks that we're participating, all of that. Uh, uh, there are jobs available you're seeing here. So those are still looking for work. There are jobs available through this. Uh, assistance for unemployment, uh, your taxes, utilities, uh, SBA. My number is on here, the number I just read to you. So uh, that is all here. All these resources are on the COVID a page for Orange County. I'm gonna to flip to my Facebook as well for the Economic Development Department. We actually just launched this. It's a pretty new department, frankly. I've been here just over a year. Uh, we were looking to launch our own social media platforms and such, and this was the time to do it. So, um, got my notifications here. Uh, you see right here, this Survival Toolkit is, is what we are, are promoting right now, but check back here. We're always uh, making uh, everyone aware of what the resources are that are out there. If something new comes up, we're putting it out. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is the New York Forward page. Uh, you see the address up there, it's quite long. Again, I would just Google it or the search engine will now be your choice. New York Forward, it's it's a comprehensive guide to reopening. Uh, you're looking at you know, right here, it's kind of a table of contents. Uh, this and some of the other documents that are available from Empire State Development, the state's arm of economic development, uh, they, they, there are a number of um, just get back to up here. There are a number of resources that you can take advantage of. If you can't find any of them, reach out to me. Uh, I'll put my email address and uh, remind you of my phone number in the chat as well. Uh, but please uh, call, call on us as needed. We, we certainly want to be here to help no matter what it might be, if it's on the financial side, if it's on reopening. We are hoping to be reopening in the next 10 days. Actually, the trends are going the right way. Sure, most of you know by now we have seven metrics we have to meet in terms of hospitalization trends, uh, healthcare capacity, number of ICU beds, and such. Uh, we have to meet those right now. Our region, the Mid Hudson region, which also includes Westchester, Putnam, uh, Sullivan, Rockland, um, who am I forgetting? Westchester. Uh, we we are on one region and we have to kind of pass those hurdles together. And again, we hope in the next ten days we'll be there and that we could start with phase one, which is construction manufacturing of virtually all sorts, 
and retail, curbside retail. And then it's probably going to be at least two weeks, but we hope it's two weeks before we get to the next phase, which is professional services and such. So uh, if you have questions about reopening, uh, again, financial uh, issues, uh, trouble with your PPP, there's been a lot of confusion and, and concern about that. There's an article in the Time Shared Record uh, today about that. Uh, but you have someone here, that's the key. So, so call, again, I'll, I'll put the information in the chat, but it's 360-0231. You see the Facebook page, you see the Orange County uh, website and our COVID a series of COVID pages. You're not alone. We're here. We're all going to move through this, uh, get past this together. And then we start focusing on the types of things that, that we want to in this call where we're looking to the future and how can we all thrive again. So thank you all. Thank you, Open Hub, again, for putting this on. Thanks for the opportunity to share these resources and, and to be a part of this important initiative. Uh, I'm look, I'll look out for any questions uh, now or, again, you can, can contact me after this webcast is over. But thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Bill. That's great. You shared a lot of really important resources. It's super valuable. And um, yeah, I think Open Hub also will be linking to those resources. So we'll keep spreading the word and uh, cross pollinating information. Um, so some questions have come up. Uh, Tom Morell wants to ask a question. Uh, if you unmute yourself, please introduce yourself. Um, like say uh, what your expertise is or what the name of your business is if you own a small business and ask the question. Thanks. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm Tom Morrell. I live here in New Windsor. Uh, I work out of West Point. I'm a government employee, retired military guy. Uh, so it's driving me crazy that my hair is not short. Uh, uh, what I wondered is, uh, with the, the new methodologies that, that uh, I forget the gentleman's name, I'm sorry. Jamie, uh, Jamie, Jamie Thurella. With, with all those things that he did to get to where he is now, uh, how many of those can he carry over into quote unquote normal business from this point forward or when we're finally opened up as Bill had mentioned? Um, I just wonder how much of that is actually gonna be able to transfer. Is it okay I answer this, Yulia? All right, so so he's really excited to continue a lot of this. Like he wants to keep communicating with his customers to do online ordering because what that does is it allows the business to be super responsive in real time without the slowdown. And so all the uh, employees can be more efficient. So he's he really loves that. Uh, the promotions and his enhanced use of social media has been really successful. So he's going to keep that going. So it, it, all the efficiencies that are working now, he pretty much wants to keep going because it helps his customer service. The hardest part is him finding out about what is available for a business his size, about a business his type. And so in the end of the interview, that's what he was sharing. He was saying, oh, wow, Open Hub, this would be great because if you guys could share resources with us, ones that were accessible, affordable, easy to, uh, you know, the learning curve to jump on board, then, then Open Hub becomes a resource for him. So Open Hub also learned about how we can, as sharing ideas, you know, there's mutual benefit. So he's excited. Yeah, there's actually a, a, a small restaurant kind of cafe right here near where I live that I actually went into the guy and said, hey, you know, during these times, um, I'd be willing to create a, a website for you that people wow. can, it, it, you know, not necessarily full blown online purchasing, but, you know, here's at least a contact form that says, hey, here's my order. I would like it. Here's my number. Call me. And to get his menu out there, let people know he's there. And he was very hesitant and said, um, I, I really don't understand it myself. So I really don't want to get into it. You know, we all, we've all done that, right? I don't understand it. So I don't want to dip my foot in the pool. Uh, but it is kind of sad that at this point in time, if a business isn't able to do that or willing to do that, or, you know, set fear aside for a minute, um, you know, that could cost you your business not willing to take that step forward. Very much so. And that is part of the digital divide that that uh, Open Hub tries to talk about 
It's not, it's all kinds of things, including just the fear or the, the overwhelm of trying to learn new technology and taking on new technology. Where do you start? That's really a big question. Yep, I agree. Thanks. Um, all right, let's look for another question. And um, then it was, um, we do have some technology experts here and it would be nice to discuss point of sales integrations because that's what Jamie was looking for. If you have any suggestions, uh, raise your hand. If you want to share your expertise. So we see Cheryl interested to share and Patrick and Patrick and Cynthia and we will go by sequence how about Louis do we see do we still have Louis no okay should we start with Cheryl first sure hi everybody um so yeah I do believe that this is the new uh, uh, Sherry please the, the new world of technology can you hear me Yes, yeah. because uh, I think a lot of businesses are going to find um, different kinds of technology to make their life better and simpler. Um, point to sale, uh, even, even with traditional business embedding a PayPal link in your invoices or on your, you know, in your email when you send out an invoice is a new way for people to pay you. Some, pe some organizations don't even do that. They, you know, they still expect people to send them checks. And that's, it's time not to do that. Or um, conveniences that I was using before that are now, um, you know, absolutely essential. So um, you can take credit cards online. Lots of people have Venmo, PayPal. You can have a, a virtual terminal from Square. You can put your products up on Squarespace or, you know, Square POS. You can do it very simply. Um, and, and then use these other delivery services to get product out or people can drive up to your doorstep and you can run out and and put it there but if everything's pre-ordered and prepaid that saves the the business owner a huge amount of record keeping uh, money collecting and you know just what what was shared about having to stop in the middle of production just to do the back end kind of uh parts that everyone can self-serve um and we're getting better at it because you know mother necessity is the mother of invention um, but there's lots of these simple technologies out there. There's a lot of things you can just integrate and plug in and hook up and streamline the stuff you were doing manually. So you don't have to jump in. At the end of the day, you can run reports, you know, and because the stuff is reporting to you in real time what the order is, who's not, you know, who's having trouble. They can text you, they can call you, um, but you don't have to put things down. So it's, you, you can wear a headset, you don't have to drop it, you know, you can still work as you go. Thank you, Cheryl. Who is next? Cynthia, please. Hi, um, yeah, this is really exciting uh, just to hear a business, you know, that was able to pivot in the right direction to support their business and do it somewhat fluidly. Um, there's, um, there's a several software tools that I like to use um, when working with local businesses and they, these tools, one is um, Dasharoo and Dasharoo allows businesses to integrate into different dashboards um, data from different locations. So F Facebook, PayPal, um, you know, if you use QuickBooks, if you use, I mean, there's tons of integrations that they can instantly pull into a dashboard so that they can better understand their data uh, and respond um, you know, effect, in an effective way. Um, another tool that's awesome is Zapier and Zapier allows you to uh, you know, handle your workflows so that you're not having to babysit your business, so, so to speak, and um, automate some of the processes that are repetitive. Um, of course, in IT, anything that's redundant, we have to question how efficient, right? So the Zapier, um, you know, workflow and creating different zaps to support some of those things. So an event happens, it triggers a response from the software and you get an alert, get some type of, you know, um, trigger uh, to, to respond. And very similar to um, what the gentleman from uh, the barbecue restaurant did, you know, um, as his, his, uh, 
his customers are ordering more product, he needs to respond to them. And um, I think he did a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, so, you know, I just thought I'd share those two resources, Dasharu and Zapier, um, one P for Zapier. Um, and uh, if, you know, I can be of help to, um, you know, help local businesses learn how to manage their data analytics or data science needs, I'll be glad to do that. Um, that's a passion of mine and it has been for the last several decades. So, um, you know, there's another tool in, uh, you may have heard of Wix. Wix is, you know, a classic website allows you to build a quick website. Well, now they have the ability to create data-driven apps that, you know, you build your website and you automatically get a mobile app that's associated. How cool is that? So you're not having to pay a lot of money for, for those two products, which as an IT consultant, you know, I've, I've been paid a lot of money to build those things. So now it's a turnkey solution, but it's affordable. And um, the time to build it is, is low. And at the same time, empowers the person to, um, you know, the business owner to be able to extend it and scale it in the direction that they want. So again, cost-effective and-, and Cynthia, um, I have a question about data for a small business like this with under 20 employees, a family run business. Mm -hmm. um, I, can you explain to a layperson, which is what mm -hmm. I am, um, how, how I would use data and mm -hmm. what is the learning curve? Because I think with small business owners, they're doing 10 things at once. Absolutely, so absolutely. Every new thing you do, even like from writing a check to doing Venmo or Zelly, um, is, is like, oh my God, not one more thing I have to teach myself. Right, right. So and how here's, you data? here's the thing. Um, there's classic analyses that are done. One is, you know, um, what are buying? What types of things? A market basket analysis will allow you to see what are they combining? So when they place an order, what products are they typically buying in one order? Um, there's another analysis that they're, that the they, uh, recency, RFM analysis, how recent, how frequent, and how much money are they spending? And that allows you to tailor your marketing campaigns to those customers. So rather than marketing to all your customers in one fell swoop, you're able to target your marketing campaigns to a given subset of customers. That's more cost effective for small businesses. Um, these, these techniques, obviously there's math involved, there's, there's you know, but once you have them set up in a dashboard, which is what my organization does, you basically bring the data in, you run the analysis, you click a button and there's the dashboard. It updates with that information. And it allows you to make effective uh, business decisions. Another common one that's done is churn analysis. If I lose customers, I need to know why I lost those customers. You know, what caused it? Was there a triggering event? And it could be something like a COVID, right? Which, you know, obviously there's been a huge drop in customers, um, but it could be also something where I gain customers, but also if I lose customers, why did that happen? And how can I recover and get those customers back? And I know from speaking with some small businesses, because of COVID, they've lost a significant amount of revenue due to churn. And so um, being able to recognize that churn is happening and effectively respond in time is something that's really important. So what I do is I handle, I, I do very simple explanations. Um, I ask them, you know, have you lost customers? Well, that's churn, right? They're, they may not know it's called churn, but they, they might say yes. And when did you notice that? And have those conversations and then build dashboards that help them respond effectively. So the data will tell the story. Um, the data sometimes we don't have time to get to, but if you have a dashboard that automatically senses that data, you can say, hey, we're experiencing churn, or we've got a, a market basket analysis. Um, we've got some kind of trend happening where we're combining things. So that Friday night special that my restaurant is offering is really working. People like that combination and, and they're highly likely to buy that again. That's right? great. Sorry, this is Joe. I'm sorry, I'm late. Sorry. I'm sorry, Pat. Oh. Um, Bill, Patrick has been waiting. Um, can you, Joe, can you hold on to that thought for a minute and we'll, sure. we'll jump back just, just to be fair. Welcome. Welcome to everyone who just joined. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I thought there was a great discussion that I think it was Cheryl was talking about a point of sale. And I think there's uh, interesting that we talked, that's the financial transaction piece. And then there's the point of engagement or the point of contact, which may start even before that or point of ordering when you actually decide you want 
a service or want to investigate a service. And to also realize that the from a from a customer point of view, every business is different. Every as Jamie pointed out, there were a lot of things he wanted to embrace as an owner, but then other businesses may only want one particular piece. And so what kind of was interesting was the fact that one size doesn't fit all when it comes to different um, clients. And that it may be good for this group to start looking at uh, uh, putting together enough of a clearinghouse to say, because you mentioned a lot of different, um, everything from Wix to all these other uh, yeah. opportunities. And so maybe helping them to navigate and understand, well, what are the choices that they might need to think about? And some of it might be, well, I want to do everything face-to-face uh, -face or or, the, or I want to do all my transactions on-premise, you know, but I may not want to, like people may want to use a phone versus a website. I may want analytics run and I may not. And so just getting them to think about these are the different aspects of your business that do touch technology in some way, they may not even be aware of it. You know, they may think, oh, you, you go on the website, it seems daunting, but there may be a lot of cloud services that, that already do that or that can be customized or people like you, Cynthia, who do that as a service. And so it just seems like the people who provide the services, uh, some of which might be free, some of which might be uh, charged, some may go into more depth, but to just have a way for them to just look at some of the things and realize they don't have to do all or nothing. Even suggestions like create a Facebook page and use that just as a communication for social, uh, letting their name get out there, how you do yeah. logos and so on. So I'll, I just thought that as suggestions come up, pulling it all together and maybe being able to provide that as kind of an easy place for them to go first and start understanding how other businesses are doing things. That's great, Patrick. And in fact, that might be a great workshop for the Hudson Valley Tech Fest in October, where small business owners can come in and maybe we have some computers set up with different programs already running and they can just tap away, do some experimenting, talk to tech experts who are already there about talking about the learning curve, how much it, how accessible it is, easy to learn, if, uh, free or not free, you yeah. know, that would be great. And to start having a resource page so that it's the, once you start searching for tech, you're overwhelmed by the choices. So to become like a clearinghouse and a workshop to help business owners, that'd be great. Yeah. That sounds really good. Almost like, almost like you would do with a career fair or a, a yes. workshop to help somebody with their resume, whatever those things are Yes, be providing that for business services. Maybe that's kind yeah, of, that's great. Uh, yeah. Did Joe, do you, um, do you remember what you were excited to talk about in response to Cynthia? Actually, it's following on from your question, Shelley, which was, um, we forget that we're entering a depression level economics. So what do we define as small business size, right? I don't look at a size of number of people. I look at the size of what's their typical revenue per year. So, I mean, this is where I think we had a conversation with Bill and Nikki about, you know, we're looking at data for small business administration. And trying to identify what was the threshold of businesses that didn't get loans, need the most insistence, and they're actually a very uh, critical part of the community. Mm -hmm. So my concern is that, um, you know, things like, you know, for looking at analysis of my small business, what have you, you know, I could probably go with Intuit or some of the other Microsoft stuff I get consumer-wise and just scale up and consume from the data from that and then get some of the online training from there. So my concern is, is that, um, it's all well and good what we're talking about, which is consistent with digital transformation and consistent with the, an, an economy that actually goes to a recession level. But, you know, I, you know, it comes down to the data, right? You know, we mentioned Shelly about people sitting down in front of computers. Yeah, they probably would sit down in front of computers or programs, but at the end of the day, it's free data. So a business at that level, if any way that we provided free data access and actually how to use that data for free, uh, I was still going for the word for free, that will have the greatest help and impact for those small businesses that are probably most affected. Because quite frankly, I think a lot of them are going to, I, I get concerned about making, uh, making implied promises of how technology can go ahead and re recover your business. Some of them just won't. And I, I like having the, those very real conversations. It's a, it's a problem I have at Dell at times as far as a oh, small business solution. Like, really? What do you mean by small business? What's the threshold? 
And that's why we, tech, we te typically have um, channel partners that ha ha handle a certain level of business. The person that handles the small business around here, I don't know who they are. Um, because of the stuff I'm inter interfacing with, I don't, deal, I don't deal with them down that level, except for the government folks. So that was the only statement I had is when we talk small business, let's have a real conversation about it in terms of the metrics of a depression level economy. Thank you. Thank you. That's so wise and correct. Up at the top, I did try and frame it as small businesses, as businesses under 20 employees, which does make up, including solopreneurs, 98% of all businesses in the country. So, so we're, and in the Hudson Valley, Bill could probably speak to this, how many in Orange County, for example, are under 20 employees would be, I would assume, similar, like most of the businesses are under 20 in Orange County? Oop. By far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, one other thing I wanted uh, to just put out there, uh, an, uh, an app or helpful data information could be free to access, but who's going to teach me or get it onto my computer and, you know, I don't have the money to invest and hire a professional like or you know, or does, can, can the county help with this, with money for that, you know, or maybe my small business loan will help with that if it really is going to bring in income and, um, and the learning curve, the learning curve. We have to keep remembering that because we all have relatives and friends who are like, no, I'll just send you a check in the mail. That's okay. You know, um, it does any, anyone else Oh, Tom, <laughs> Tom, do you want to say out loud what you sent in the chat? <laughs> sure, I just said I, I'd barter for a for a rack of ribs. You know, <laughs> you want to yeah. learn how to you want to learn WordPress? Sure, fill my belly and I'll fill your head. Yes, well, I just had some really great ribs yesterday. I got some really good barbecue there. Oh. Very good barbecue. Oh yeah. Yeah, I live. I live probably a quarter of a mile from from uh, Brothers Barbecue. So, um, yeah, I probably finance that new construction. When we're talking about the really small businesses, they're falling through the cracks. They always have, and they always will, because the price point to support a small business and their expectation of the level of support are completely um, incongruent. Yes. Um, I give you $100, I expect I can call you anytime I've got a problem for the rest of my life if I'm a really small, small business owner. So the value of professional services also has to be um, somehow honored. Um, but yeah, who, how do we get that, la like the last mile of who helps with the installations, who helps with the virus? I, you know, I'm really concerned with people going home, their company sent them home, even the people who work you know, on a paycheck and the company's connection to their database in the cloud is very secure, but who's checking in on your router, your computer, your Roku, uh, you know, who's making sure all of that stuff is secure and the level of hacking and uh, in intrusion uh, attempts are just on an astronomical level. And that also has to be addressed you know, I'm in the Apple space and the mythology is Macs don't get viruses. Well, you can just throw that out <laughs> to forget about that. That was great while it lasted. Woo hoo. But now we have to get serious. Everyone has to get super double serious, you know, and the amount of um, companies that are going to have, um, you know, get totally owned and, and are going to have, uh, you know, ransomware attacking them. It's going to be, it's going to just go on the increase and who's addressing that and how do we do that and how do you you know how do you have quasi organizations that can afford to address that for the small operator for the pizzeria and the ribs guy and the local mechanic who's going to address that stuff yeah yeah it's great questions very thought-provoking tom uh, i i have to tell you i have a a completely different appreciation for smaller businesses now. You know the the rib joints and the burger places and the and the takeout places, the small hardware stores. In that, you know, before I used to think 
oh my god, fifteen dollars for I don't know pulled pork sandwich, whatever it happens to be. I think, my God, that's a lot of money. Hell, there's only $2 worth of meat in there. But mm-hmm. now that we've seen what's going on, I have that full appreciation for, you know, uh, I've got employees to take care of. I've got insurance for them. I've got unemployment for them. I have all of these other things that I, I never really thought about before because when I'm sitting there with what, if I bought all of the materials myself, that sandwich is three bucks but I'm paying 15, but I have a completely different appreciation for that now. Yeah, how essential our local businesses are in so many ways. And yes, they're also brothers. If uh, We also had a PowerPoint that I showed the storefront. They have a freestanding building that they pay for and maintain. So yeah, the, owning a small business is you're, you're the CEO of everything. You're handling it all. All right, um, I, w- I think we're coming towards the end. Is there anyone else who would like to share wisdom, feedback, closing remark? I think Tom hit it, which is, I think Tom hit it, which is, yeah. go ahead. We will share and send all these support and appreciation to Brother Jamie. And we will share all these resources with them. Yeah, I I hope that he can uh, join us at Hudson Valley Tech Fest so he can talk about his business in person and also talk about his family history, which is an incredible family. Um, So hopefully, hopefully we can hear him then. Thank you everybody who joined us today and for your patience and understanding with our last minute changes Um, And yeah, we'll pass on to Jamie's family, all the the well wishes for him and um, keep brainstorming how we can all mutually help each other uh, to make to make each other stronger. During a pandemic and beyond way beyond. Thank you. Really strong. Stay strong. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you everyone.